Hello, this is a video tutorial for MIDA Senefix. I will teach you today how to do the transient heat transfer analysis in the designer mode of MIDA Senefix. So I will use the heat case model for that. First, let's go into MIDA Senefix. Now verify that you are in the designer mode and click on new project. Now you have to import your CD model. Choose the file called Heatcase 3. And don't forget to check the option Search Contact Space to assign automatically the contact to your model as soon as you will import it. Click on Open to view your model. Now I will create some material to assign to this model. So open the Material tab. Click on Add and enter a name for your model and also all the characteristics needed. So call it Brass for the elastic modulus you can enter uh, 100,000, 0.245 for the point ratio, 8 point six um, power minus six of the mass density. As we are doing um, heat analysis, we have to verify that all these coefficients are correct or the results you will obtain will not be correct. Zero point one five nine for the conductivity. 381 for the specific heat and you can enter also tension of 723.83. Now click on OK and do it again. Add. This time you can call it A AI 60 6.5 and to the elastic modulus 6.9.0.0.0.33 for the positive ratio 2.7 power minus 6 for the mass density 2.4 power minus 5 for the coefficient of thermal expansion, 20 for the reference temperature, 0 0.2 for the thermal connectivity, 9000 for the specific heat, and just click on it. Now you have to assign this material to your model. So first uh, check, select this uh, frame, right click, material and select material uh, AI60635. Now select these two parts. Right click, material, and select the brass. Okay. Now we have done that. As we will do a transient analysis, we will have to create some time function for the variation of the temperature. For that, you have to go in. Um, LBC window and you can right click on function, select time function and uh, give it a name, transient heat generation 1. Now you can enter all the values to draw the curve or you can also take these values from an Excel file. So here I put all the values in the Excel file. So just copy and paste these values inside NFX to obtain the curve. Click on OK and do it again. So time function. This time call it uh, transient generation 2.
and I will again import these values, copy and paste, okay? And you have to do it one more time. So this time I will call it external temperature. We simulate the variation of the external temperature around the model. So you see at the beginning the temperature will increase and then the temperature will be stable at 70 degrees. Click on OK. Now you have to assign all that to your model. So uh, just go in the tab transient thermal and select transient heat generation. So this part, click on this part, we will assign a heat generation of 1 watt per uh, millimeter cube. And here you have to select the transient generation function 1. Click on apply. Now select the other parts here and uh, enter 1 also and this time select transient generation 2 and click on OK. Uh, next step will be to assign the transient convection. For that um, you have to first go in the work tree geometry and please hide the part which is called the case. Now that you have done that, open the transient prediction window and select all the face here except the two face which are in contact with the case. Enter 1 for the ambient temperature and choose the external temperature for the time function. So in fact, the value you enter here will be multiplied with this function. This is why I enter 1. Now for the film coefficient, enter a value of 0 0.0004 and uh, you can give a name if you want, transient convection and click on OK. Apply. Apply. Sorry. Now, click on case in the work tree, right click, and click on show only. Show the case. Now, uh, select all the case, all the faces, but select, you have to unselect these two faces which are in contact with the two gray spots. So you have 80 faces in contact. In the time function, choose external temperature and the same thermal coefficient. And you, you can enter transient equation too. And just click on OK. Now you can um, hide, hide again the case and show these two parts. Uh, as I have a lot of labels here and uh, I don't see anything, so I will hide all labels. Now I will do the meshing and for that I need to have more accuracy in these parts. So I will select uh, size control and here you have to um, select the number of the region and select these uh, four edges of this part and to two for the number of division. Click on apply. So when the meshing will be done, it will, be, it will uh, divide this side into two mesh. Do the same for this part. Okay. Now, um, show the case again and click on Auto Mesh. 
select all the parts of your model and select hybrid measure. Um, you can click on option here, select user define and enter three millimeters for the side of the mesh and check the option adapted C and geometry proceed. Click on OK. And your model will be matched. Uh, the central pole, the central part is quite big, so it's taking a bit more time. Now I will create my analysis case. So click on general, enter name for your analysis, call it transient or heat transfer analysis. Choose the solution type for nonlinear transient heat transfer and verify that your contacts and your thermal loads are assigned to your model. Now, click on analysis control and choose the tab nonlinear transient. And in this tab, select time duration, 60. The number of time step, select also 60. And check the initial temperature option and enter 50. Now you have an option here to stop the analysis when the temperature changes less than, uh, let's say, 0 0.001. So it will make you gain some time in the analysis. Now, now just click on OK and perform your analysis. Okay, the analysis is over. Now if you look in the left part of the work tree, here in the analysis and results tab, you can view your result for the temperature by clicking here for each step. And if you want to see all the steps, you can click on this bar and drag and drop it to view the, how the temperature evolves, increase with the time. You can do it also uh, in animation, and it's also to save the animation if you want to use it. You can do also the solid thermal gradient and the solid flux resultant, and you have more options if you right click and insert the analysis result. Yeah insert more type of the results. Now, uh, if you want to view, let's say, the temperature on this side, you can use uh, the on curve tool. Just select uh, these borders and click on OK to view uh, the evolution of the temperature. Now you can drag and drop it to uh, the change in temperature using this curve. So it's quite useful. Okay, this was a tutorial for my lesson effects. Thank you very much for watching.